Hey, what's up guys? Out in the garage again. Today, doing a quick oil change. And today's weather is actually amazing. Uh, and it's another test and tune. So we're gonna head out probably in another hour and uh, go see if I can get my 60 foot a little bit better. So stay tuned. Also sending it off to uh, Blackstone Labs to see, you know, how the motor's doing. Uh, it is a stock motor. I really haven't put anything special in it previously. Thought I'd try out one of these bigger K&N filters. I uh, didn't even really know they offered a bigger filter for this, so we'll try it out. But I already got it drained. I'm just letting it drip out now. Uh, this time I'm gonna be using the Rob Dom Special VR1. We'll see if the oil pressure goes up. I'm interested to know if this, you know, heavier weight does anything or if I won't even see a change in oil pressure with this worn out stock motor but we'll see all right so we made it out to the track it's only a week from the last time I was here but this time I'm hoping that the launching parameters will be a lot better so I went a little bit more aggressive on the boost builder function so it's gonna pull more timing while it's on the two-step to build more boost and then hopefully it'll launch a little bit harder, get me a little bit better than that one 760 foot like I did last time. But yeah, so we'll see what the first run does and get back to you. I forget what the duty cycle will make so I think I put it at like 46% duty cycle so I don't know maybe 17 18 pounds pounds of boost peak so pretty much right where I wanted it thank you you're welcome 11.6 that's pretty good for a first pass 117 60 foot big 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 improvement 1612 so uh, last last week I wasn't able to get into the one twos at or one sixes at all well, it looks like it went lean and the boost controller cut boost a couple times. Uh, and then I got out of it right here and just feathered it back in. Uh, and it still went pretty quick. So I'm thinking if I tweak that area of the map, throw a couple percent at it, and uh, hopefully it, uh, it cleans it up. All right, well, I cleaned up the fuel. So hopefully I added enough. Also brought down the uh, air fuel ratio safety cut. Put it to just under 12 and a half to one air fuel ratio. So hopefully I won't hit that. And I also turned the boost up 4% duty cycle. So might just go over 20 pounds on this run. So 
hopefully it does all right. We'll see. Hopefully I can get a good launch again and not have to pedal. good oh. oh let's see what that was oh that launch felt so good yeah. thank you You're Woo, buddy yes 10 to 8 oh I did it again Whoa. <laughs> wow Wow, that launch was so good. Oh my God. <gasps> Woo! <laughs> Woo! 10 8. Did it again. Oh, I really didn't think it would do that. I really didn't think it would do that. Looks like I'm. Um floating the valves so at 5800 rpm it looks like it's at the end of the track it's not accelerating anymore so i really just think i'm gonna buy some valve springs for this stock motor and uh see if that helps it's only like maybe 150 bucks upgrade to some beehive springs and see what happens so probably do that maybe next week see how they do on drag week I'm gonna try and run another 10 I didn't turn it up any kind of getting worried about how much boost this little motor can take but really I just uh, tried to maybe build a little bit more boost on the line and uh, pulled a little more timing I had a little bit of knock at the top end of the track still not positive if that's real could be false but um, I am pushing this thing pretty hard, so pull a little timing out, see what happens. Oh, that GTR did not get off the line. Good, I hope it did not break. Mm -hmm.
felt just as good. Don't know if it was any better on the line. It was still pretty good. Hard to say. Hard to say. Oh, man, that launch. Woo! It's like uh, around the same peak boost. So I'm going to assume that was at least a 10. Not sure what that will do, though. Oh yeah? Yeah, it didn't look good off the line. It was really slow. Ooh, 10-9, so not as quick. Still 10. There's the broken GTR. Oof. That's a bad day. 157 60 foot, so I did not pick up on the 60 foot. Well, we'll see what the data log says. Not terrible. Yeah. Not terrible at all. She's good way to end the night. Yeah. I'm good with that. Hey, what's up, guys? It's the next day. We're back from the track. Went pretty good. Could have gone a little bit better, but I really didn't even expect to run a 10. So that was great. I was happy. And not only did we run 110, we ran two 10s. So it is officially for sure a 10 second capable truck, even with a stock internal motor uh, with, you know, a little over 20 pounds of boost. So I see us only improving from there. So I'm excited to see what the next stages of upgrades will get us to. Um, but yeah, so let's go over the three time slips real quick. So this is the first time slip um, and I was in the right lane the whole night. So uh, it turned out pretty good. 11.6 at 117. Like I said, I had a couple issues. The boost controller cut out because it went a little bit lean. Uh, and then the next pass, I basically took care of that and turned the boost up a little bit. So it went uh, 10.89 at 121. Um, not, not bad. Definitely not my quickest. It's my second quickest. So no, no personal best. But, um, and then I basically just backed up the 10 with another 10, nine at 121 again. And then, um, in both of these passes, I was basically, uh, you know, the middle of third gear one, I had some knock retard. So I'm really thinking that that's not true knock because on the whole time on the dyno, I was running pretty much the exact same uh, timing. Um, I did pull some timing out for that final pass and it still hit some knock. So uh, what I actually wind up thinking that it is, is I think I might actually be floating the valves and that might be getting picked up as knock. So I think the next biggest thing that we can do is upgrade the valve springs. Um, that's pretty easy to do. I actually already have a set of valve springs. So in the next episode, we'll um, throw those things on and show you how I'm gonna be able to do that with the motor still on the truck. Pretty simple, I think. And then uh, beyond that, a camshaft will definitely pick up a significant amount of power. I have one of those, but to be able to put it in this, in this truck, it's kind of a pain in the butt. You really have to pull the motor um, just because the timing cover is not like an LS, it's it's a real pain in the butt. Um, you have to pull the oil pan off, and to be able to get the oil pan off, you basically have to pull the motor out of the truck. Um, there's really no way to get the oil pan off with, with the motor in there, uh, at least on a two-wheel drive. Trust me, I tried. Uh, I think this was pretty good. Hopefully you guys liked it. So if you did, be sure to like, subscribe, uh, share it to your friends, and we'll keep pushing. We'll see you later. Yeah.